Thanks very much. I will be happy to take any uh, questions or comments if anyone, anybody want to make any comments. Um, if not, we'll jump to our uh, next speakers. Let me see if we have any questions. Okay, so we our next speaker is uh, um, Dr. Akakin, also from Turkey. Um, I believe he's going to talk about wide matter tracks of the cerebellum, another area with where fiber tracking has uh, really influenced and increased our knowledge. Yeah. Good morning and uh, good evening uh, to everybody and to all the world. And uh, I would like to thank to everyone who organized this beautiful meeting. And uh, I want to hi to all my uh, fellow friends and uh, they are good dissector and they are going deeper and deeper. And uh, thanks to, to all to, for their contribution. I also congratulate uh, Abu Zer, uh, who came up for dissection on Sunday morning in the Turkey. And uh, if the back is not photo. <laughs> And the images like uh, classic the Roton morning uh, in Abu Zar screen. And uh, there are a number of approaches uh, to post post in brain surgery, to occipital, transplantorial, cerebellar, uh, uh, presigmoid, retrosigmoid, collateral, telebular. And uh, there are uh, more than 10 approaches uh, have been described, especially in post post uh, but uh, this place is very hard uh, to reach because there's a thick bone in here and the handle the surgery in safe is very hard in here because it's very limited space uh, and after muscle and skin dissection we are reaching to the cerebellum uh, there are 26 approximately million cells in the billion cells in the cerebellum this number is a uh, one third of the brain uh, but it's an organ uh, that has been ignored for many years. However, as the years progress, uh, the patients ask if my quality of life will change rather than ask if I will be paralyzed. So this uh, structure will be more value in the future uh, in the course of time. Uh, the cerebellum has uh, three surfaces and uh, this is the tentorial surface. Uh, these three surfaces, tentory surface, petrol surface, and suboccipital surface. And the intentorial surface, there's, it consists of two lobes uh, and the vermis in the midline. And there's a tentorium to superior to this surface. Uh, anteriorly, simple quadrangular lobule and the uh, uh, superior seminivar lobule can be seen. And the uh, Kuhlman and Decklip and the Folia uh, can be seen in the midline. And the supratentorial root is uh, used in, this uh, uh, in the surgery in this way. And uh, there, is, there should be a simple lobule. Uh, it's hidden just inferior to the uh, quadrangular lobule. And uh, there is another surface is uh, suboccipital surface. And uh, suboccipital surface is consists of the uh, lingula, uvula, and the pyramid in the midline, and there is a bilaterally ventral uh, lobule, and the anterior to this there is tonsil, and the, the posterior to the uh, ventral lobule there is a, a, a inferior seminal lobule that is uh, separated from superior seminal lobule with the horizontal fish, and then the, another one is the third surface is the petrol surface, and the petrol surface. Of the front uh, anterior part, of, anterior surface of the cerebellum, and there is a huge and important structures. Uh, pontin is localized in here, and it consists of the majorly middle cerebellar pedicle fibers, and the, uh, there are seven, eight, and all the cranial nerves except one, two, three, uh, arising from this surface. So this surface is very important. Also, there is a 
colloculus and foramen lusca is located uh, in this uh, surface. And if we look closer, we can see the pontocerebral angle, and there's a foramen lusca in here with the bohodelic bunch of flower appearance of the choroid plexus and the seven, eight, and the six, uh, seven, eight, and nine nerves complexes can be seen uh, in this structure, and the ependium of the foramen lusca is uh, can be seen in the bohodelic uh, bunch of flower. And if we go on from the superior surface, if we remove the quadrangular lobule, the simple lobule is, can be seen. And uh, it's, uh, we can also observe the, some part of the inferior cerebral peduncle fibers and middle cerebral peduncle fibers uh, just under the quadrangular lobule. And uh, if we remove the quadrangular lobule, simple lobule can be seen easily. Uh, we can also observe the superior cerebral peduncle and the middle cerebral peduncle fibers. And uh, if we cut the, and uh, remove the superior cerebellar peduncle and the superior uh, medullary volume, uh, fourth ventricle floor view uh, can be seen. And the middle cerebral peduncle is laterally, and the nodule and choroid plexus just in the midline. And we can, if we look inferiorly, we can see the passive corpus and the up to centrifuge. Uh, places in the fourth ventricle floor. And uh, if we go on the dissection from the anterior to the posterior, we can see the some medial lenticus fibers and the rectus uh, just superior level. And uh, we can see the some medial lenticus fibers and the rectus and the uh, uh, we can see the middle cerebral pedicle fibers, it's cutting, and uh, there is a trigeminal nerve that's passing between the middle cerebral pedicle fibers, and uh, this view is from the anterior to the posterior. And when we go to dissection from the uh, superior to inferior, and uh, then technicals can be seen uh, in the inferior to the quadrangular lobule and the superior seminal lobule, just lateral to the and then that includes there's the uh, middle cerebral peduncle fibers and superior to the and uh, that includes we can see the superior cerebral peduncle uh, fibers can be seen and uh, if we go on the dissection more uh, we can see and if we go to the posterior we can observe some part of the middle cerebral peduncle fibers and uh, some part of the inferior cerebral peduncle fibers that's passing between the superior cerebral that uh, peduncle and middle cerebral peduncle, and it passes to the other side over the nodule level to the uh, other side of the cerebellum, and uh, we can see the uh, we can observe the uh, dentat nucleus. Uh, if we follow the superior cerebral peduncle, we can observe the dentat nucleus easily. And if we go on dissection to the posteriorly and the big, bigger appearance. We can see the superior cerebral peduncle, and uh, between the inferior and superior cerebral middle cerebral peduncle, we can see the inferior cerebral peduncle. Some part of the inferior cerebral peduncle passes uh, the same side, and some part of it is crossing to the other side. And uh, if we if we remove the old uh, white matter, uh, and uh, uh, we can see, observe the dentat nucleus easily. Uh, it's very big, big nucleus in the cerebellum. We can see the, in the operation with the microscope, and uh, sometimes it's mixing with the tumor because, because it has a gray matter, and uh, uh, this uh, nucleus it has a connection with the dentate fibrotelomic tract. It's passing inside the superior cerebral peduncle. And if we dissect more, and uh, remove the old, we can see the dentat nucleus and the superior cerebral peduncle. Just lateral to the superior cerebral peduncle, we can see the inferior cerebral peduncle fibers that have been cut in here. And the lateral to this, there is a middle cerebral peduncle. And if we looking from laterally, we can see the, uh, this is the colliculus, inferior colliculus, and this is the superior colliculus, and we can see the fourth nerve. 
and uh, this is the superior uh, cellular pedicle fibers, and this is the inferior cellular pedicle fibers that passing crossing over the superior cellular pedicle, and lateral to this, there's a middle cellular pedicle. If you follow the uh, superior cellular pedicle fibers, you can reach to the biggest nucleus of the cell belly. And if you look from lateral, we can see that the white uh, trigeminal trigeminal nerve easily that's uh, arising between the uh, middle cellular pedicle fibers. And uh, we observe that uh, superior to the uh, trigeminal nerve, these fibers are coming from up majorly from the cortical levels and the inferior to the, this trigeminal nerve, the major fibers are coming from the forms. And uh, this uh, is the trigeminal nerve, this is the lateral view, this is the inferior colliculus, and this is the uh, superior cerebral pedicle, and this is the colliculus. To uh, understand easily, and this is the another uh, lateral view of the cerebellum, we can see that uh, there is a, a lateral nucleus, uh, that's just lateral to the superior cerebral pedicle, and we can observe the middle cerebral pedicle fibers, we cut the pawns anteriorly, and we can see the some uh, pyramidal tract fibers and the middle cerebral pedicle fibers uh, in anterior part of the region. And if we go on the posterior and if we cut the uh, middle cerebral pedicle fibers, we can see the lay of the uh, trigeminal nerve. Uh, it's lying inside the middle cerebral pedicle, and we can reach to the nucleus of the trigeminal in lateral side of the. Uh, fourth ventricle, uh, we can reach from the lateral to the midline uh, dissection. Uh, we can reach to the trigeminal nucleus. And if we cut, uh, put the dissector uh, to un under the lateral lemniscus, and uh, we can see better uh, the lateral lemniscus. This is the superior cerebral pedicle fibers, and this is the middle cerebral pedicle fibers. We can observe the fourth uh, nerve, it's um, passing uh, around the lateral lemniscus. And this is the suboccipital view, and anterior to the uh, inferior, uh, anterior, this is the pons level, and we can observe the uh, in suboccipital level tonsils, and lateral to the tonsils, we can observe the biventral lobule, and the uh, uh, if we look the midline, we can see the lingula pyramid and the ula easily. And if we separate the tonsils and biventral lobules, we can see the biventral uh, tonsil, the biventral fissure. It's very important. In the past, it was this site is using for approach to the uh, fourth ventricle floor, but right now televolar approach is more popular than this approach. And uh, uh, if we separate the tonsils bilaterally, we can see the inferior medullary volume and choroid plexus. If we cut the volume and uh, remove the choroid plexus, we can see the old ventricle floor and uh, tilt to uh, aqueduct. Uh, we have to know that uh, from superior lateral, uh, site is very important in tonsils because it's the attachment site to the cerebellum. And uh, if we go on dissection at the suboccipital surface, uh, at the primal level to the lateral to this, we can see the dentat nucleus. So tonsil labiventral fissure approach always the mesh to the uh, dentat nucleus. But if we approach from the uh, televolus, uh, we are not giving the damage to the neural tissue. And if we remove the tonsils bilaterally, we can see the dentat nucleus easily. And uh, there's in fourth ventricle uh, lateral side, we can see the dentat nucleus protuberance. It can be landmark in approaches to the fourth ventricle or cerebellum. Uh, if we observe this uh, protuberance, we can understand that the uh, lateral to this side is the dentat nucleus. And the medial to do, uh, we can observe the superior cerebral pedicle fibers. And uh, if we go on dissection posteriorly, uh, we can observe the cerebellum bilaterally. We
we can see the superior cerebral epidemical fibers that reaching to the dentat nucleus and the lateral there is vestibular uh, and dorsal cochlear nucleus we can see that and if we look from the inferior to the superior we can observe the dentat easily with the superior cerebral epidemical fibers just lateral to the there is a then that nucleus protuberance at the level of the foramen lushka, and we can observe the vestibular nucleus in here and dorsal coordinate nucleus at the lateral side, and we can see the uh, rhomboid fossa. And if we uh, separate the uh, uh, cerebellum from the vermin and uh, the tract to bilaterally, we can see all the port ventricle floor, and uh, there's a rhomboid fossa, and the this is inferior fovea, superior fovea, uh, facial folliculus, and uh, at the midline, median long distance folliculus can be seen. There is laterally superior vestibular nucleus, and dorsal cochlear nucleus can be seen. And if by making dissection, of course, we are correcting uh, the all dissections with the DTI. These are all DTI images. Uh, we made this paper approximately 10 years ago, so right now there's high resolution DTI images is better than this uh, images and uh, we can observe the red color uh, red i'm sorry red color is inferior cerebral pedicle and the uh, yellow color is middle cerebral pedicle fibers and the yellow uh, green is uh, superior cerebral pedicle fibers and this is our dissection correlated with this and uh, if you look from laterally and uh, again the same appearance with the dti images and uh, we opened uh, our uh, Roton lab while uh, in uh, 2014 and uh, with opening of the uh, with, we opened uh, our lab with uh, Dr. Roton's life and uh, we uh, and we made a lot of paper in our lab. Uh, uh, we learned many things from Dr. Roton and uh, uh, the lab was built uh, while Dr. Roton uh, alive and it was opened by Dr. Roton and uh, Dr. Oliveira, Matsushima, El Mekti and Matthiessen and gave lecture in this uh, cadaver uh, lab and uh, Roton, Dr. Roton is uh, one of my life uh, turning points. I got ideas and advice from him and uh, he helped me too much in, in my uh, social life and academic life. And hundreds of people all over the world all are currently on his way and uh, leave his uh, memory. And when uh, COVID epidemic is over, I would like to thank all of our friends and teachers uh, who contribute to the holding this meeting and with hope uh, of being together again and uh, as the uh, in old days thank you very much thank you dr akakin thanks for that beautiful presentation um let me check if we have any questions okay this is actually uh someone is asking um, in my experience, because this is for me apparently, while resecting tumor, how much hippocampal and insular damage has no neurodeficit? I think that's also a great question for Dr. Ture that he, he can address now or later. Um, uh, what happens when you remove the hippocampus and the insula? Uh, in my experience in general, when patients have already a tumor in the hippocampus or in the insula, they actually can get better and get better. Also, Juan, if you're around, if you're going to address the post-operative deficit in patients with uh, insular gliomas, I know you have a good experience with insular gliomas, um, uh, what type of deficits could you expect uh, post-operatively? We can, let's, let's leave this question for later uh, and Dr. Tude can address and, and respond to us. <clears throat> 